So we're using VBA to create buttons for super fast data input. And so far, we've looked at how to use code to create a button, to copy and paste it, and also to position a button. So using the left and top properties of the button to get it positioned really precisely. What are we looking at in this video? Well, the next step is to create multiple buttons because we don't want to have to, you know, click every time we want to create a new button. Ideally, we'd say create 20 buttons, 30 buttons, and then we'll be able to loop through them automatically and it would all be done at the click of a button. That's what we're aiming for. How many buttons do we want to create? Well, obviously we could specify a number, but it would be good if that number was dynamic in the sense that uh, the routine would look at how many, number, how many buttons are needed and then create that number of buttons. For example, I've got 10 students in the spreadsheet here. So in this instance, it would be good if the routine would automatically create 10 buttons. And equally, if I were to add a couple, uh, one more student say, students 11, then the routine would add 11 buttons. So that's what we're going to look at this video, incorporating a loop into the code to create multiple buttons, and then looking at controlling that loop and using the loop to control the position of the buttons and to create the number of buttons that is needed. So let's get into the Visual Basic Editor, and this is what we've got so far. I've just uh, deleted, just cleared out the other buttons using this Delete Buttons macro. But this is the macro um, that we've been working on. So we want to incorporate a loop here, and uh, a good loop to use here. Um, well, let's say, let's use a for next loop. That looks like uh, it will do the job. And let's say dim counter as integer. So I've declared an integer, an integer variable, and that variable is going to control how many times we go through the loop. So let's start. Let's try to create five buttons. Say uh, that's a, a small number that's you know easy to control. Uh, the code will run fairly quickly as well. So for counter equals one to five. And then it's a good idea when you open a loop, and I've opened the loop with the for command there, it's a good idea to immediately close the loop so you don't forget to do that later. Then let's say next counter at the bottom. So with that construct we've created there, the code, well, Excel will loop through the code five times and should create five buttons. That's the idea anyway. Uh, I'm just gonna adjust this slightly Let's change uh, this reference to three because we want the buttons to appear in column C. That appears to, uh, to make sense. So let's just run the code. Um, as always, not necessarily expecting it to go right, but if we run it, we can understand what's going on and improve it. There we go. So we can only see one button here. A single button has been created. Where's that button? It's in cell C8 and the reference here eight rows down, three rows across, one, two, three, A, B, C. Um, that corresponds with this reference here, the cells reference, and that's why the button has appeared in C8. It looks like there's a single button, yeah? It looks like there's only one button there, but if I move one of these buttons away, we should find that there's buttons underneath. There you go. And there will be, I won't go through them all, but there will be five of them because we've asked Excel to go through the loop five times. So we've managed to create multiple buttons, but we can see that there's an issue there with the positioning of the buttons. It wouldn't be much use to anybody to have five buttons positioned on top of each other. So how might we uh, improve this loop to control the position of the buttons? And specifically, every time we go through the loop, we would like the button to appear one low one row below, one row below the previous button. So how might we do that? Well, um, let's use the variable, let's use the variable to control uh, the position, to control where the buttons uh, are, are appearing. And let's start with, we would want the first button to appear in cell C5. So let's change this row reference to five. And then, in fact, we'll start with four. And then we're going to be able to control position by using the variable. 
and the variable we declared at the top here, the counter variable. These variables are so useful in loops because the variable increases in value by one every time we go through the loop. We can see counter for one to five. So Excel goes through the loop five times. The first time it goes through the loop, the counter equals one. The second time it equals two and so on until it gets to five. We've specified a five uh, that Excel should stop when it gets to five. That's so useful for us if we're doing things like positioning data or here positioning buttons, we can use the variable to position things really precisely. Let's get into it. Um, so let's try uh, four plus counter. I will pull this into your screenshot properly now so you can see it. There we are. So four plus counter. Let's just step into this code now. Uh, so we can see we're going through the loop for the first time now, counter equals one. Going through the loop for the second time, counter equals two. The third time, counter equals three. So the value of counter is going up. That's gonna control how many times we go through the loop. But we've also used counter down here. So that means that this cells reference is increasing by one each time. That's gonna push, push the reference down the spreadsheet that's going to create the effect of the buttons uh, slotting in one after another really precisely. That's the idea uh, anyway. Um, it's going to reposition the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to clean out the uh, previous buttons using this delete buttons macro. Delete buttons macro one more time. There we go. Okay, and then just keep an eye. In fact, I'm going to adjust the column, uh, the row width here, the column width rather. There we go. And now we should be able to see, that's much better. So I'm gonna step into this code using the F8 key, really useful tool for understanding code. Stepping into the code using the F8 key and hopefully these buttons are gonna appear. And there we go. So we can see the buttons are appearing um, and then kind of stacking up. But if we have a look, they're, stat they're actually stacking up uh, with perfect alignment here. That's because we've specified the alignment in the VBA code. So there's no need to kind of align these manually to do any annoying mouse work. These are being perfectly aligned um, by the code, uh, which gives this super clean and tidy look. Good stuff. Okay, so we've created the buttons. We've got the buttons kind of stacking up. It's really, really clean and tidy look. That's great. Uh, but we said at the beginning we want to be able to, uh, or we want the, the number of buttons, we want that to be dynamic, the number of buttons generated to be dynamic. Specifically, we want one button to generate for each student in the spreadsheet. How many students have we got in the spreadsheet here? We've got 11 students here. So we want to create a mechanism to count the, the number of students in the spreadsheet and then to communicate that to VBA so that VBA understands how many times to go through the loop. To do that, we're gonna combine formulae and visual basic coding together, which is another awesome approach for getting loads of stuff done uh, in Excel. So to do that, let's assume that we're gonna use this area for um, putting students in. And to do that, I'm just gonna put some formatting in here. Uh, border, let's just have a nice simple border here. And that shows us that this area is the area we're using for inputting student names. So we're assuming here we wouldn't have any more than 11, 12, 13, wouldn't have any more than 15 students. That's the assumption I'm making here. Obviously, once you understand this, you can very easily scale it up to accommodate more students. And then let's put a formula in here to tell us how many students are entered. So in this range we've created between uh, row four and row 18, within that range, how many students are there? How many entries are there in that range? So what formula might help us to do that? Well, it's a super useful formula, particularly for combining with Visual Basic, and that is the count A formula. It's gonna tell us how many entries in a specified range, how many cells rather, in a, special, in a specified range contain data, contain entries. So we've got count A there, then I'm gonna make sure the reference is accurate. There we go. And it's returned a value of 11. So if we put another student in here, let's put student 12 in now, you can see that count A is updated. That's because there's another entry in this range, 
in total 12 entries. So maybe you're seeing how we might combine the code and the formula together to control how many buttons to generate to control how many times to go through our loop. Let's do that now in the Visual Basic Editor. So just think, what part of the code are we going to change here? Well, let's look, uh, there's a specific line of code here that controls how many times we go through the loop. Four counter equals one to five. So we're saying go through the loop five times. So we want to change this to a dynamic reference. And let's just say range b2 dot value. And this is the really, really important part to understand. Here we're combining together spreadsheet formulae and visual basic code. So in B2, we've got a formula that, um, that is counting how many students are in the spreadsheet. We've, we've then referenced that formula at the beginning of the code, and this will control how many times we go through the code. So I'm going to clear out the old buttons using this delete buttons routine. Just get rid of some spaces at the bottom here. Okay, and let's just save the file and then play this. There we go. Okay, so we saw the buttons appear there. I'm going to run that again, run that one more time. There we go. And we can see we've got an additional button here. Um, so that's not ideal for us. So how might we reduce the number of buttons created by one? How might we do that? Well, we can just say range b2.value minus one. And that means that Excel will go through the loop one less time, uh, which should give us the desired result. And there we go. I'll run that again, delete the buttons, and then run the code to generate the buttons. Let's reduce the number of students to five students, delete the buttons again, run the code one more time, and there we can see we've got the right number of buttons. And not only do we have the right number of buttons, the buttons are beautifully lined up, uh, perfectly spaced, very nicely presented too. So that's as far as we're going to go in this video. We've looked at, well, we've gone from creating a single button and positioning it to creating multiple buttons, but we've done more than that. We've put this nice dynamic mechanism into the code, which can tell how many students are in the spreadsheet and then takes that number, puts it into the Visual Basic code and that controls how many times we go through the loop which in turn controls how many buttons are generated. So really powerful dynamic coding, combining together a spreadsheet formula with the Visual Basic code. So we've got our buttons here, but the buttons, when we click them, they're not doing anything. So that's the topic for the next video. How can we get those buttons doing something? What do we want the buttons to do? How are we going to get those buttons doing something? See you in the next video.